So I would like to show you two tools. One tool called Curve to View, where you can blend two curves that are perpendicular. It's very useful. And one cool call, uh, tool called Flow Along Surface. And we'll use this uh, with a hatch to create uh, the back of a chair, a very organic chair. So I'm going to start in the top view with a circle, zero, something like this. And in the front view, so perpendicular, I'm going to draw a curve. So you can type curve or click, I think it's this one, click here. And here, make sure you press Alt so you don't O-snap. And we're going to pre uh, we're going to draw the roughly the shape of our um, chair. So it's a bit too groovy here. So F10 and just move this. Once again, make sure you're not snapping to something that you don't want. Maybe I'll move this up a little bit. Yeah, that should be okay. Voila, escape twice to hide the point. So the tool is here, Control Shift E. Make sure the circle is smaller than your curve, and it's Curve to View, CRV to View. First curve, second curve, and you see it mixed it both. It's a very, very interesting tool. So I will delete this circle, and now I want to cut this so I can use the split. Split is the same as stream, but it keeps. So what are we going to split this one? Who is cutting this one? So now you see we can actually delete this. To make this a surface, there's an interesting tool called Patch. And you can select both and right click. Preview. And if you want more or less tension, you can change the stiffness here. You could go 0.01 or 001, I've done that. Uh, but for now, we'll keep it this way. Now, one bad thing with what we just did, if we go F10, we can see that we have floating point way outside. It's because uh, Rhino keeps a history of your trim. It was a good thing. So when you have things like this, you go shrink, trim, surf. So you do that often after a trim or a split. Shrink, trim, surf. And what's going to happen now, you see, those points that were here came here. I just press F10. Uh, and I think we're good to start. Uh, I don't need this. I can delete this. This, you see, don't match this anymore, so I could also get rid of it. Uh, we'll need it later on, but we'll make a new one. Uh, I th sometimes I'm in, I'm in rendered also. Make sure. Uh, but I like most of the time to stay in shaded. So here is a new tool. There's a tool called Hatch that you can use with a, a close curve, so let's say a circle, or a rectangle and what the hatch do it would fill this with a hatch pattern it's a very useful thing and it look at any AutoCAD hatch that you can free hatch that you can download from the web so you see if I say OK and uh, now I've got a hatching pattern here and uh, it's grouped but you could explode to get all of those lines okay so I want a hatching pattern so I'll draw a rectangle for that but I also want a plane, a surface, because we're going to deform a surface against another one. So we're going to take a surface like this and flow it along the other surface. So this is why I need a plane, a surface. I'm going to go plane here. Just eyeball it, do it uh, roughly the size. So that's for the deform. Then I need a rectangle, roughly the same size on top. That's for my hatch. So after, I'll get rid of the rectangle. So I select, you see, it tell, it's telling me there's two, the curve and the surface on top of each other. I select the surface, I go hatch. Here, I think I was using grid. You could rotate it 45 degrees. And if it's too small, or you can uh, go uh, three to scale a bit. Say OK. So now we've got the rectangle selected. I can go delete. And now I want to select my hatch. Now it's one block. So I'm going to explode it, but make sure you don't deselect, because now we have a 90 object. And now I can run my command flow along surf. The base, it's the plane here, roughly here. The target is this. And you see it took all of the hatch and uh, threw it here. So very, very useful tool. Uh, now I want to use this contour to cut those, but this doesn't really match, and I don't have the contour anymore. So I can just go dup 
edge, duplicate edge, and it's a common that if you click on a surface, it would extract the edge. It's a bit like silhouette. Uh, voila, so now I can delete the surface, and now it'll take a little bit, but you would have to go split, it'll be faster than trim, I think. Object to split, it's all of them minus, so I control click out this, enter, and what's cutting is this. So now it's done. The only problem is that you're gonna it's gonna take you a while to you could select by length, there's a different way of doing it, but and I'm sure there's a way that I don't know, but here I do it like this. Okay? So I don't want the video to be too long, so I'm not gonna do the whole thing. But roughly like this. Now to make this a chair or 3D, you could select it all. And one way of doing it is to do a pipe. A thickness you'll have to try, one is a square on the edge, maybe 0.3, and press enter. See it's way too big, so we'll redo it and I'll go 0.1. That's better. And now if we go and render, and if you 3D print, you don't even have to boolean, they'll be connected. Now another way of doing this, what about if I want this to be squared? Then you could select it all, do an extrude uh, curve, and this time you don't use solid, you just use one direction. And you don't go too high, you could type it in, but you just want uh, oh sorry. You, like I said, maybe you're better to type it in. Uh, I just want a little bit. Yeah, something like this. So it just make a paper thin line underneath each curve, and now you can select all of them and do an offset surf SRF. And here you can ask for a solid. And this one should be tiny, like uh, I don't know, 0.05 because it's going to be both sides. Solid to yes, always lose to yes, means both sides will be the same. Solid, both sides, enter, voila. So look, if we look now, looks like it's made of wood or something. Here we go.